two of the top premium SUVs fight it out. The BMW X3 recently faced it against the Mercedes GLC in the all new generation here with Thomas Nautico for you in 4K full screen, full length. Let's go. The X3, well, it's been there quite a while on this generation, but with the facelift, new front grille here, vertical fins, really strong styling. This also has the M Sport package. So we have the black accentuation in the low part and a stronger intake right here. Both have LED specs. You can get different LED specs. And interesting how they have totally different signatures here for the LED. The GLC also in the comparable AMG line today. That means also sporty air intakes right here. And it now also comes with this micro star pattern, a really beautiful feature. So to me, from the front, they're both very beautiful. It's just different design philosophy. What's your take? Tell me in the comments. With 4 meters 72 or 186 inches, the new GLC has grown a little bit if you compare it to the predecessor. And now it's basically at the same length like the BMW X3, just a centimeter difference. And the design language is completely different here, especially the GLC, more this, this round shape here overall. Interesting sidestep. They not only look cool, but also serve aerodynamics, but you might get you, you know, you know, trousers dirty or something when they are dirty as well. 19 inch wheels, winter tires, comparable also to 19 inch wheels, winter tires for the BMW. We also have painted wheel arches in the vehicle color, both white here today, a great comparison for sure. M Sport Pack means M Batch here. And here also this, um, you know, this breezer element because in this case, it's not a real air breather, just a design element. And then we have here also black around the windows. And you can see the difference in design language once again, where you have more curved in, more angular features with the X3. The question is, which one do you prefer? I think both are beauty in themselves, I have to say. Front was both, you know, very appealing. Side, I think, yeah, that's a little bit more, you know, angular, sporty siding. I would prefer the X3. What about the rear? In the rear, we can see big design differences. Here with the GLC, more this round shape raindrop design, I would call it. New style for tail lamps and in lower part, out of crew, fake exhaust police alert because these are clearly just visual tips. With the X3, a more rectangular design, a sportier approach with the recent facelift, also new tail lamp design here. This is a very cool thing and really always tells you, hey, this is an X3 that you can also distinguish it against the smaller brother, the X1 or something. With the M Sport Pack, you also get the black accentuation in your lower part, a diffuser style, and these are real exhaust and in this case. Which one is the favorite for you in the rear? Tell me. Acceleration figure, by the way, just a little bit over six seconds for both, but difference in the, on, on the US market won't be that much because of the emission rules in the European Union. This is a little bit detuned, so there is then a bigger difference in acceleration. So the GLC, a little bit quicker, a little bit more horsepower here with the spec GLC 300 against the X-Drive 30i. And the very interesting technology detail is the rear axle steering up to 4.5 degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels. This comes together in the package with air suspension and the air suspension and the rear axle steering this is actually special to the GLC. The X3 does not have it, just a normal adaptive suspension. And the cool thing is here with the rear axle steering, it reduces the turning circle by about a meter because this here goes 4.5 degrees in the opposite direction. Isn't it funny that in the key fob comparison here, the Mercedes, again, all the way round, central shape, and the BMW more angular shape, so the design on the exterior is also reflected in the key fobs. I like that actually. Here, Mercedes door closing sound, actually quite solid. And then inside of the doors in the new generation, it's all about the looks definitely. It's therefore very sleek and also clean. But then again, functionality wise, this one does not get feedback anymore with controlling seat. One button design here for seat heating and memory function. So visually it looks cool at first then, but when you look closer then, Maybe I even prefer the previous generation, but the ambient light integration is awesome here, also around the air vents. So the Mercedes interior is more really about look here, what we got, more this wow effect. AMG line means also the horizontal spokes at the steering wheel. And in this case here, there is an animal skin spec on the seat, but there's a lot of Artico, for example, the high grade leatherette available also for the Mercedes, they have good choices there. Seating position here in the GLC, I would say it is fairly comfortable, yes, but I wouldn't say 
it's ideal for tall people. So I think the seat ergonomics is not top of the game. So when you're tall, you feel like sitting more on the seat than in the seat. However, just the cockpit around you, around you, that is more caging you in actually. So not too much space above your head. It's okay with 189 or 6 foot 2. But overall, seat ergonomics, I think the GLC will not win today. You won't get back pain or something, but I think Mercedes has to work on the ergonomics. Interior setup with the Mercedes here. Everything very central with these round lines. Nice wood insert, but a lot of high gloss black here. But I really like the air vents as for the illumination. But here, that's again seen it with the C-Class. It's not straight, you know, they're not like, you know, they should be like this. But yeah, build quality wise here uh, on the inside, just these knobs, not that ideal. And the temperature is always controlled in the screen right here. Yeah, um, so no real dials as for that. But it has also here a lot more interesting features. Here, for example, in this off-road view, we can also go to this off-road camera and then we have a see-through bonnet. The image is being built up and now I can see what's going on underneath, not with the live feed. The live feed is around. The feed underneath is then basically built up by the live feed before and then I can exactly see what's underneath. So that's a very cool feature. Here, once again, close up how I control the temperature and the main infotainment system. This is the map. It's somewhat also responsive, yes. And then you can go to the main menu like this. Good overview, actually, at the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's also then available as the wireless. Only thing that is cool here with the vents, you have this feature that the air vents turn red or blue depending on the color changes. Digital instruments, where we can also see the consumption. 9 liters, 1 kilometers for the GLC. 26 MEG US, 31 MEG UK that would be. And then here we could also, for example, have full screen GPS map, car internally though, or for example, this great off-road gauge. This is, yeah, the most fancy one for sure. And you also get a head-up display. How does it work here on the steering wheel? You slide here, for example, for the volume. It looks clean and fancy, but for controlling it, always better to have a feedback. There is some kind of feedback when you press this here, but you see here is like one button fits it all basically. So one button, but then different capacitive areas. Mm, this middle console is full of high gloss black, so yeah, not my favorite one. Underneath you have cup holders. They are not that much securing the bottle though. Then I here, for example, I have a cable um, connected because in the front you have two USB-C chargers. And I always like this split opening here for the armors with more charging underneath. Now to the rear. Same design here. Of course, inside of the door is also interesting because they use a lot of, you know, also here like leather red material, soft touch, everything, and looks cool from the ambient light integration. Legroom, however, when I'm driving here as a tall person, barely fits actually, so not that much legroom. It works with the recess here, and headroom is actually no problem. It's decently comfortable, but also kind of stiff from the seats. Looking forward to the comparison to the X3 and in the middle part, you can also sit, but very limited also as for the legs. So if you go compare it also to the GLB brother, by the way, has approximately the same length, but just has more space on the interior. The GLC is more this upmarket SUV in the Mercedes lineup and also, you know, with more power and more luxury features uh, and so on, rear access steering, whereas the GLB is more like this family space on the inside. But what about the comparison here, GLC versus X3? This will also be very interesting here for the rear. Switching to the BMW, door closing sound, also solid, maybe a little bit better probably. Then inside of the doors, also soft touch material, also clean design and so on. Here with real haptic feedback for the seat control directly at the seat actually. And the seat itself also available now here, of course it's a standard thing, perforated sensor tech. And this is, you know, also with breathability, great quality and also animal free. This one also the M Sport steering wheel here. Steering heating control is right here. With the GLC you have to use the voice command or it's just combined with the seat heating actually. Seating position. Somewhat comparable. I feel that the BMW X3 gives you a little bit more SUV driving position and the GLC 
that's more or less more crossover-ish. Here you also have a little bit more space with the middle console and the seat itself, you sit a little bit more in the seat actually, so maybe a little bit better. But I think for BMW seats, the X3 doesn't have like the best ergonomics, but it's still good. We are really comparing good and good, definitely. In this segment here, I think ergonomics-wise, the Volvo XC60 would be the best one. And the Lexus NX is also very good as for the seat comfort. But overall, I think maybe like a slight, but just maybe a tiny advantage here for the BMW X3 from the position. And well, headroom, hardly comparable here because this one is not equipped with panoramic roof. And then we have a lot more space, but you can also get one for that. Interior overview here with the X3, well, you feel it's not as sensual, not that modern, not like, oh, screaming out, wow, look at that, like in the Mercedes GLC. This one more drawn back, more conservative, nice brushed aluminum. Since the face lift, you also have a bigger screen here in 12.3 inch, but here different is with the GLC, we had this huge vertical one. Here, the more horizontal approach, so really large difference indeed. The question is what is better? What I do prefer in a way is to have a manual climate knob still with you know some haptic feedback and some interaction with the vehicle. As for the infotainment system here, the map is also somewhat responsive and this is the CarPlay integration, also again via touch or also control it from below. Car internal map then on the middle part in this OS7 generation, not yet possible with, with CarPlay and Android Auto Maps. So you see here, this is more simple and you don't have so many possibilities like with the Mercedes. Steering wheel buttons, to me, cooler here with the BMW because you can really press them there, individual single buttons. Yeah, I mean here, the manual climate unit, it's cool to have it, isn't it? Yeah, also here the volume knob, good to have a separate manual one still. And sound systems, here the Harman Kardon and the BMW versus the GLC sound from Burmester. The thing is here the Harman Kardon to me, a little bit more low frequency bass intensive, also good in the surround sound. And the Burmester maybe has a little bit more clearness. So hard to say which one is better. The thing is really more what you prefer. Um, here we would say, they had a bisschen mehr Wumms. Listen and repeat, they had a bisschen mehr Wumms. More like, you know, has a little bit more of a like, bass punch. <laughs> That's, you know, the approximate translation. And the other one in the Mercedes, the Burmester, more crisp clearness. So I guess it depends on the type of music you play. Lower part right here. Ah, this, you know, this can get stuck here at the beginning a little bit, so don't like it that much. But the cup holes are actually better with BMW. They hold bottles a little bit tighter. Inductive charging pad, you'll need this. Um, also connect via cable but here but the thing is that the carplay or android auto connection is always wireless and with the bmw you still get a real shifting lever in the lower area some do definitely prefer that and here this is then this control knob there uh, another possibility for the infotainment system i think it's good to have it especially while driving and then we have this armrest here also very well built with more space underneath also nice build quality here in the rear with soft touch materials this leather red covering sensor tech coming for the rear, rear seat doors and here with this brushed aluminum look wow really cool actually and then also the seat bench with the perforated center tech so yeah looks like a build, good build quality a little bit more conservative in the styling it's also the comparable older vehicle as for the leg room when i'm driving you see also not too much space the recess also works so yeah both don't have too much leg room here i have to say um here it would also be I compared the GLC with the internal brother GLB, which had more space on the interior, although it's same size. The X1 is smaller than this one here, but has basically the same, or maybe even a little bit more like room. It always has to do with the packaging and these bigger vehicles, they usually have longer hood and so on. Headroom, no problem at all, but this one again also without the panoramic roof. I can't say that any of these here has a big advantage in the rear. Middle seating, um, yeah. It's also a little bit cramped as for the legs, but then it's a little bit softer here. So both work for four tall adults, five just on short tracks, but no clear winner as for the rear. Now the trunk comparison, both used to be at 550 liters in capacity. The GLC now topped up 50 liters. It's now a little bit larger, so 600 liters. And what about the concise thing? So here, that's the 
slider rails on the side. The width here is actually a little bit more than a meter of 40 inches. That's well done. And the length is yeah, also approximately a meter or 40 inches, maybe a little bit shorter. And the height is always very interesting. This is the highest point here at 73 centimeters or 29 inches. The folding mechanism here, at least when you have this one, this possibility, this is awesome, the most awesome. Look at that. I mean, wow. Immediate folding and super clean and flat. And the total length is about, yeah, about 180 or 71 inches. Below here, by the way, a lot of space still. Look at that. Then when we switch it over to the X3, you maybe remember the height with the DLC. Let's compare it here. What do we score? This is higher at like 78 centimeters or 30 inches. So the GLC was ending here. So you have, you know, like more height here. That's very usable. Then below also some more space. Then about the total length because we can also fold the seats um, here in the deck three, of course, but we have to reach over. But then it's actually also fairly easy to do that. A little bit less comfortable total length here. Yeah, I mean, here it's like also 180 or 71 inches. It depends also where it's closing. Usually it's more like here. So, yeah, more or less the same. And then here the normal length of the trunk is, yeah, a little bit shorter here as well, a little bit less than a meter, 40 inches. The width here is comparable indeed a little bit more than a meter or 40 inches so a um, little bit more height for the x3 but a little bit more length for the glc overall both are very, very well usable this seems to be here more you know a little bit more square especially the opening as for the engines main difference is that for the x3 you can get six cylinder petrol and diesel engines however this is the four cylinder engine also a very big bestseller here the 30i as rear drive or as X drive here with the all wheel drive, rear wheel bias, 245 horsepower at least in the EU spec, 258 horsepower for the 2 liter 4 cylinder in the GLC, GLC 300 also available as rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And with the new generation of the GLC, they set everything on four cylinders, expecting a six cylinder diesel on the later stage. So these are the main differences. And the thing is that the acceleration figure, the GLC is a little bit quicker than the X3 here in this comparable engine spec and also the plug-in hybrids they have a lot more range here with this c-class or glc platform welcome to thomas's comparison driving lounge glc versus x3 starting with the mercedes glc new generation glc 300 formatic german autobahn acceleration onto the motorway these two cars pass you shall pass and then from 45 kilometers an hour sports mode let's go That's enough here for now. Wind noise is actually quite okay considering this high speed. And here also with the air suspension in sports mode, it's giving me more feedback. And wow, it's surprising how upright this car is staying. So it more feels like a sedan to drive indeed. Yes, of course, put up, but really stable indeed. And that shows also this air suspension is indeed not set on a very soft note. It's rather set on a stiff note. It's still comfortable, yes, but especially in the sport mode, it rather should enable you sporty driving indeed. For more comfort, we go back here to the comfort mode in the drive select. You do not have to hit it on the screen. You can also you know, like scroll through left and right. So that's at least possible. Responsive net could be a little bit better. Here in the comfort mode now, comfort is definitely fine, fine as for suspension, but again, I talked about this sometimes when I'm driving Mercedes. I love it when they have air suspension and having this very soft floaty ride. Maybe that's too soft for some others. I don't know. But for me, I think it's great when having air suspension. But here, rather on a stiffer note without losing comfort or something. Here now in the tunnel, 
look at that ambient lighting. I mean, this is like, this is like night riding, you know. Here, there, 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 there. Is it too much for you, or do you love it? Just tell me in the comments. So I really find it very, very cool. Why not? And you know, also here when you play with the temperature again, that you have the red vents then when you make it warmer, blue vents when you make it colder. Of course, also when I would have the green, just the, the standard color, and then the more the make it colder, then it jumps from green to blue, for example. But I have set blue here to the standard color at this moment. I really like the steering input. So it's quite precise and direct. Mercedes steering inputs used to be, yes, natural, but in a way kind of slow. <clears throat> so you had to turn a lot until something would happen. Here they have made it a little bit more, you know, you know more reaction to low degree angle. And this progressiveness I really like. So in this case then, a big difference to the previous generation. Indeed, this new generation GLC, if you compare it to the previous generation, feels definitely sportier to drive. And then, of course, you have that rear axle steering, which is just just massive. You know, this is also then when we start comparing to the BMW X3, the rear axle steering 4.5 degrees in the opposite direction. This is a major advantage indeed when you think about U-turns and also come here, Shuri, where can where can I show you that? What we could do is actually Yeah, I mean there's there's a fuel station here nearby, so uh, let me just drop it to the fuel station, then I can almost like you know turn around in a circle or something. So it is at low speeds, it turns in the opposite direction. And for example when I get on here now. And you know this not like a vast array, you know, you know but just when I here, when I do like this, let's take a look at that. So this guy's wondering what the hell is this guy doing there? But here I can. It almost feels like I would be turning on standstill, you know. So yeah, no, not gonna fool the fuel station. Fool the fuel. Yeah, I'm not gonna fuel it up. So. Sometimes you think like you know like U-turns you would say like I can't do it with you know with such a big SUV. Yeah, here it is actually possible. This rear axle steering is just awesome and that BMW doesn't offer it for the X3. Might be something coming up then in, uh, in an all new generation at some point or, or so. So rear axle steering steering really good suspension also doing a good job. We can there's an X5. <laughs> we can head out to the motorway once more and do some more high speed driving and see how the lane changes are at higher speeds. But before that, cruise control, set, assistance systems. So here the distance to the car in front of me is being kept. I can activate or deactivate the active lane keeping assist. At the moment it is activated. And then here you can see the car keeps itself in the lane. This is the blind spot monitor visually and when I put the turning indicator then it also acts acoustically. Here in the settings you can also deactivate the active lane changing assist and then it's actually gone. Yeah in this case the car is just keeping it up anyway because you see that the steering is turned just a little bit and the corner is going exactly a little bit left. That's astonishing. <laughs> so that would yeah that looked like active lane keeping although it's not active lane keeping because also uh, from Toxie, you know, that, that the wheels just follow the ground. Very interesting. Sportsman one time, when we hit 90 kilometers an hour, let's go. Very nice sound, right? 130. 150. And 180. Yeah, so, let's around here. Wow. Cars being kept in the lane very nicely. Of course, not that we got the assistances. I mean, like, suspension is doing a good job, not shaking up the vehicle. Now at high speed lane changing. Feels real. Oh no, it wants it. Speed limit for winter tires. <laughs> at 210, so that's the speed limit they set on the winter tires. It feels so calm and collected driving high speed motorway. Here, when we have some waves actually, then the air suspension become, becomes apparent. Then we know we are doing an air suspension. 
went, wow. I mean, how well this vehicle is handling on high speed for an SUV without being like Porsche Macan or something, you know? So definitely confirms the thing, switch from previous to this generation, that it's way sportier than before. And so far, it was really the thing. When we were looking at GLC versus X3, we could always say, yeah, you know, the X3 is the sportier one, whereas the GLC is the more luxurious one. And since they made this generation sportier in the drive, that doesn't count that much anymore, you know. Um, also, remember here, it is basically still a... Brum, brum, brum. <laughs> it is basically still a rear-wheel driven platform, so you can get this one here, for example, in the US also as rear-wheel drive. But in the EU, this one will then be um, all-wheel drive. In most cases, it. The hell? Yeah, this sound emulation is also um, telling like, hey, we're sporty now, you know. <laughs> Very interesting. So, yeah. Indeed, it is uh, more fun to drive. So again, with suspension, steering, rear axle steering, and so on, this generation is indeed more fun to drive now. That's definitely a cool thing. And if they want to make it up to BMW, you know, so try to even out that gap, indeed, as for the sportiness, they did that. So, and yeah, technology-wise, it's pretty amazing with the rear axle steering. So. These are a lot of advantages that Mercedes has gained now. It also offers that air suspension, then again, the price is higher, so it's always pro and con, definitely, yes. So the GLC, from the driving part here, already gathered a lot of pro arguments against the BMW X3, so this might be a very, very close race. Is there anything yet, when what we could say on the negative side? Well, to, told you on the interior, when driving here, it's not that I would get any back pain or something, you know, so it is comfortable enough. But I still have the feeling also, I've been driving um, yesterday like 600 kilometers in one day. Didn't, again, have any back pain or, or something. But I feel like these seats are a little bit too stiff, especially with the animal skin material. The article at the red will be a little bit softer and you more feel like... Oh, it wasn't wasn't for me. You more feel like sitting on the seat. Oh, what a nice uh, old W123. So uh, you being like, you cannot go into the seat being held tight, you know, so you're more sitting on the seat, like almost like blown off the seat. Just, you know, accelerating now a little bit. Horse traffic here. Um, so I'm not exactly sure if they thought about really tall people for the seats. If you're a little bit smaller, and it's no problem probably. But I think that the long-term seat ergonomics at this moment, at Mercedes in general, is not top of the game. And that especially like, you know, Lexus, Volvo, um, Audi is doing that better. BMW, sometimes yes, sometimes not. Depends on the car model. What about the X3? And now the BMW X3 in that comparison. Well, first of all, steering-wise, this is very interesting. So it used to be the other way around. But now the Mercedes GLC actually has a more direct steering. That's very interesting, isn't it? Might have also something to do with the rear axle steering option, but not only. Because here also, indeed, I have to steer more in the BMW. So that's a very interesting thing, right? Isn't it? So it's also good in as for steam feeling and I also prefer it if you compare it to the BMW 3 series which feels to me a little bit less natural in a way but here I think yeah it's totally fine but surprising that the Mercedes GLC has the more direct and actually sportier steering feel just from the whole mm, drive itself from being in that vehicle here somehow the X3 feels a little bit more engaging sport here but just you know on a very subjective note you know what i mean so um that that whole layout maybe also where mercedes sends it more to the wow luxurious features here the x3 feels a little bit more engaging but you don't have it anymore this difference that hey mercedes luxurious bmw sporty because the new dlc generation is also 
quite sportsy, so that's a very interesting thing. We have the adaptive suspension here in the BMW, that's the one they got, so both with the optional suspension. Uh, the air suspension in a way can do a little bit more with the GLC. They have set it on a sporty note, or oh, interesting wrap for that A5. They have set it on a sportier note than before that air suspension. Um, at the same time you feel here, the adaptive suspension is also very good. However, due to that air suspension in the GLC, um, it is not less sporty, but at the same time it is more comfortable. So also a very good ride here with the X3, no doubt about that, but you feel a little bit more what's happening on the road, whereas that air suspension in the Mercedes is evening the things out. Of course, that's also the thing about going for the options. So one of the key findings already we can say here that when you have like a low spec GLC versus low spec X3, there won't be such a difference or maybe also a little bit favored towards the X3, but when you go high spec versus high spec and also get all of these optional technology features that the GLC has, like rear axle steering plus the air suspension, then the GLC plays out these technology advantages in that new generation and then it actually is a better ride than in the X3. So uh, very interesting uh, finding here already right now. Overall, it is also, you can also have it relaxing, even though it is engaging. The engine, of course, power spec wise, it is somewhat comparable, definitely. You maybe remember how it picked up in the sport mode in the Mercedes. That was actually pretty quick. And what we can do here is also go to the sport mode and put it here to the S shifting mode as well. So this is then in this case here, um, like two different uh, things you have to do. And when we just roll a little bit and then just see how responsive it is. Yeah, maybe also quite responsive, but maybe a little bit more, you know, of course takes for the shifting down. So then bang, you get the, the, the big boost. Um, yeah, in a way maybe that was a little bit smoother with the Mercedes, I would actually say. It will be very interesting soon when we head to the motorway and do the high speed comparison, how it compares right there. I can always say both drive very, very well. It's really, really hard to pick a definite winner um, in here. Just again, when you think about U-turning and uh, you know parking it out there, the Mercedes with that optional rear axis steering is already a winner, definitely. Here going some left and right. Um, I mean, the funny thing is here in that very small degree, you see here, it doesn't do too much. But then when you go some left and left and right in this degree, then the X3 gives you a little bit more feeling for the vehicle. And although the GLC is sporty now, indeed, the thing is still that the BMW more feels connected. It's more like this. Here, I always know I am driving the vehicle and rather feel one with the vehicle. The GLC more has this, oh, this is like high tech stuff and this is really amazing and impressive, but it's rather like I, I am driven by this high tech vehicle. You know what I mean? And the, that is, you can't really say like, that's good and that's bad. That's more about also personal preference both have something, the GLC kind of transports more fascination while driving, whereas here the X3 more transport this mm, more purest car enthusiast feeling. So, and once again, both have something unique. This is really about what is important to you. What is important to me? Maybe I know more about the this decision here. I'm driving at high speed on the German Autobahn. Sport mode and S shifting mode from 50 kilometers now. Let's go. Slowing up and 200 kilometers an hour. We start a little bit earlier the acceleration. You also lane changes at high speeds. 
very well done, really stable, also not too much wind noises, considering the high speed, definitely, so also very well done. It feels also calm and collected, definitely, and the adaptive suspension here at higher speeds is more comparable than with lower speeds, that's very interesting. Here also, once again, lane change at high speed, very good feeling for the vehicle. Um, as for you know noises and so on maybe it was even slightly better for the Mercedes but it really interesting is that suspension wise when you really at high speeds both are more comparable when you hear at like mid speeds and low speeds then that air suspension of the Mercedes is playing um, out its advantages so there you definitely have more comfort so the air suspension just more adaptive, more versatile uh, in a way here, there. Um, yes, there's also an adaptive suspension and the comparison will maybe look a little bit different when the Mercedes has the base suspension, that, but that's what we got here comparing high trim versus high trim and here in the tunnel. There is some ambient lighting inside of the doors and also here towards the side area. Looking also quite cool, also in the lower middle console here, but definitely that ambient lighting of the Mercedes is no match for that here when you're driving tunnel. For some it's too much, some rather prefer it subtle, but yeah, some find it also cool. The cruise control we have here is also an adaptive one. It's at the speed and also the distance to the car in front of us being kept. Um, lane keeping assist here um, is more that, let's say, like this emergency um, um, lane keeping assist. It's not as comparable as active as the one in the Mercedes, so then the one in the Mercedes is already, let's say, a step higher as for the elaborate lane keeping assist here. Once again, a little bit more driver focused, and that's also a lot of fun here in this Autobahn Ausfahrt. It's near the exit of the Autobahn. Yeah, so it's very interesting, you know. So I, I wasn't really quite sure what to expect when comparing these two vehicles, indeed. Um, both have definitely their unique strength. Mm, and I was kind of surprised how sporty the GLC is now. But here, yeah, the X3, it doesn't have this high-tech sophistication focus, but it still has this engaging drive. Let's get now in this corner here. See here, I have to steer a little bit more. But very well outside the corner. All wheel drive here also with the rear wheel bias then with the BMW. Really hard to say which one I prefer powertrain wise. The Mercedes seems to be a little bit more efficient. So here, you know, more than 9 liters, more than what's 10 liters or more kilometers. So that's rather than, you know, towards 20 something plus uh, MPG, barely 30 MPG UK. So a little bit more better advantage as for the fuel economy for the Mercedes. One more time, 90 kilometers an hour to whatever, let's see. One fifty. One seventy. Ah, feels really nice. It's uh, amazing indeed. I mean the X3 feels quicker, although on paper the acceleration figures are better for the Mercedes. That's very interesting isn't it? Hmm. Strange indeed, right? So, but that's also the thing, you know, so it feels it feels quicker and it feels still sportier to drive, just a little more engaging in the handling, whereas the Mercedes has this, you know, technology shine stuff. Um, at higher speeds here and there, some rattling stuff, I have to say. Um, that wasn't the case with the GLC, so here also small advantage for the GLC. From the driving itself, again, both great really. Um, here maybe a little bit more fun focus, where we have more tech photo, tech focus with the GLC. Let's sum that up and phew, it's gonna be tough. Which one would I take home and which one would I recommend for you today? It's going to be a tough one. Well, the thing is, from the exterior styling, I really like both from the front. The Mercedes has some cool features like the MicroStar pattern, but the BMW also looks very strong in the front. I really like both in the front. I think this, the design is overall good. But then again, towards side and the rear, I think I rather prefer the X3 for more angular styling. 
is the automatic closing function, by the way, that the side mirrors also fall in the car close itself when they go away from it. Um, so here more round central styling for the Mercedes and it carries over to the interior in there styling wise and also ambient lighting wise that's what I find very lovely with the GLC whereas the X3 is more drawn back more conservative so this interior of the GLC gives you more experience and more showing off effect indeed. But then again, the X3 has manual climate dials, for example. It also is more simple in a way, you know, and both have something, you know. You can experience more with the GLC, but you can easier use the X3 and both. Yeah, it's, it's really tough indeed. As for the space on the interior, they are not best, you know, they're overall. Their smaller brothers, for example, would have a better packaging overall ratio. In the trunk, also comparable. I would rather say it's more rectangular with the X3. Rear legroom, also quite comparable. And driving-wise, well, so far in the previous generation, I would have said, yeah, okay, the sporty experience, X3, luxurious experience, less sporty, GLC. Now the thing is that when you have this air suspension and maybe also set on the sport mode and so on, and they are sport you also from the steering and so on. So the GLC has even this gap. It's not that this one would not be sporty anymore. So that's a major finding also from this review, from this comparison review. Technology-wise, the Mercedes leads it indeed because of that rear axle steering that makes it so much better to use parking in and out. That would be a crucial factor actually, but it's also a very cost-intensive option. Hmm. And of course, when you go for a plug-in hybrid, this one will have a big pure electric range, 100 kilometers or 60 miles and so on. From the, like how engaging it is to drive, I would say the X3 still has like a notch more when you sit down and it's still a little bit like the X3 is like drive me and the GLC is a little bit more come on be driven, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I think the thing is, do you prefer the styling on one of these? both exterior and interior and how important is it for you to be a little bit more engaging in the drive or are you more focused on the technology side where the GLC just offers more. So sometimes in these comparison reviews I struggle, sometimes I say okay this is the clear winner or this is the clear winner but today it's super super tough. I wouldn't say that there is a super clear winner on either on this one here today, it's real thing is more technology focus and more like showing off or more a little bit more conservative more a little bit more engaging to drive that is their crucial choice for the day and also depending on the market the GLC in most cases will be a couple of thousand euros more expensive especially when you go for these technology features so I would then also look at the pricing so I can't decide right now which one I would take home. I think I would take maybe weeks really to, to decide and then also look at the pricing. Here again, the Mercedes will be more expensive if you take these technology features. Let's, let's take it that way. When you compare high spec versus high spec, I think the technology features for the Mercedes GLC shine. But when you go low spec versus low spec, then the difference is not that large from the technology thing and then the X3 would have the advantage. So yeah, that's my verdict for today. Which one would you take home? Tell me in the comments and also tune in to more comparison episodes.